Well, g'day guys, it's Matt here. First drive of the new to us tractor. And I tell you what, it takes me to get used to the, um, the CVT. It's gonna take a little bit to build my confidence up. So what's happening today, going to be working on Tiny One. Um, one of the mid rollers needs to be replaced. So we've got a new one to go on there. And I'm doing some electrical work to the house. It's just still too wet to do much work with the dozers. Um, it might be another yeah, day or two before we can hook into that. But uh, yeah, good opportunity to get them in tip top shape here. So this, roller here is the culprit that one there it's been leaking um, and it's been topped up with oil but just keeps obviously leaking so we've got a new one here to go on it and I think these are about 300 kilos so they're not light um, and because of that we've got this tool here that's been made up to go on the fork of a, a tractor or a forklift and that slips over the end like that and, um, and that way you can lift it up and poke it in. But uh, yes, to get the bolts out, we have to use this. So we've got Phil here as well. He's um, yeah, gonna be working on this while I duck off. And I think they got Josiah scrounging around in here somewhere, cleaning out something. There he's got his head buried in there. So this is the hydraulic power pack and this is where you set it to whatever pressure you need. Um, there's a little book in there that tells you what so pressure. We've got the inch drive. So we get, look down here, we want about 1650 foot pounds. So that's about 5,000 PSI on this uh, gauge here. So that's what we'll have to set it to. So we're just setting up the right pressure here now. So we'll see, we've got about 5,000 is, is nearly straight up and down. So just so we don't do any damage, um, yeah, you get that set up and that way we're not going to snap any bolts when we, when we do up the new ones. They're just winding it back now to get it right. There we go. Righto. So what it does is it just ratchets this. So if you need to swap it around the other way or make it turn the other way, you just pull this shaft out and pop it around the other side. And you just... You've got to work out whichever way it fits in there and then you... And you pop that thing in back there so it gets jammed up against something nice and solid. So it's jammed in between the roller and the actual track there. And hold her in and then you just you just keep going on and off with the switch and it just ratchets. You might be able to just see there's a little pin in there that moves along and it's just like a ratchet. So, we'll we just usually crack them there, crack them there so they're loose, and then you can get the rattle gun in there and um, and and get them all the way out. So yeah, it was only a brief walk around that the old man did in the last video. 
um, but we'll go into a little bit more in depth here now. Um, so it's a 2011 model. So, so yeah, quite got a bit of age about it and it's done seven and a half thousand hours, but it hasn't done much hard work in its life at all. So it's very tidy. Um, mechanically, it seems quite sound. There are no real leaks or anything like that. And in the cab, everything works. Everything's neat and tidy. So we're really happy with it. It's um, yeah, it's all come up, scrubbed up real nicely. And yeah, again, there's just no real issues. It just it probably, if you were to hop in here and guess, you'd say it might have two or 3,000 hours on it. So there's nothing real to give away that it's done that much work. So this model here actually has the same motor as some of the models above it. And I think this motor goes out to about 220 horsepower or something like that. But this one is the lowest model. So this is only 160 horsepower. So it hasn't been worked hard. The motor can handle a lot more than, than anything it's ever done. So that has contributed to, um, yeah, it's reliability and it just hasn't really worked hard at all. But uh, yeah, so it's the CVT. So that's how you, you just push it forward and backwards and she just does what it does and it takes a bit of getting used to. And this is your controls for the um, front end loader part of it. So it's all integrated into it and um, yeah, just real nice to use. Uh, yeah, it's got the same screen actually that's in one of our headers, the, the original header we got, that's the same same screen as that. So we sort of know how to navigate them a bit. And I've just got to put a UHF in there and then I think she's ready to ready to rock and roll. Righto, so after getting mildly distracted helping there, I better go back and do my other jobs. So this is a seat out of the poor old grasshopper. You can see here we've got bushes worn out, um, there was a few bolts missing and the mount for the airbag had worn right out and pretty well broken off I think. And the mechanism over there has been, yeah, it looks like Johnny's welded up a few bits and pieces for it. So yeah, give it a bit of love. Poor thing. Now I did do a walk around of the trailer here when it was up at the main farm. Um, so yeah, maybe at the end of this video, I'll put that in, um, just for those that are interested of, yeah, what, why we, first of all, why we have a trailer, not a, a work truck or something, and also some of the bits and bobs we keep stored in there. So if you're interested in that, um, that'll be at the end of the video. Righto guys, while the seat's out, we're taking the opportunity, it, it is filthy there, that's very embarrassing, but... Taking the opportunity, we'll go and um, take this to the air compressor and we'll blow all this out, clean her up. So we'll see how we go with it. So if I crouch here like this, it's not the most graceful thing I've ever done. But yeah, the compressor's just only 100 metres away and yeah, it's been used to blow down the dozers, so just as quick to take this down now, I think. Righto, it's looking a bit more tidy now. Well, folks, Peter back again. I'm back at the home block. We're just uh, testing out a few little uh, experiment that I had with this uh, rock bucket. You can see here, um, it bent the other day. This, this, this part of it bent out when it broke, the pin broke. And <clears throat> so we cold pressed it back. <clears throat> with a various means of at our disposal, mainly brute force and ignorance. And between us all, I think it's pretty close. And a couple of days ago, well, that was a couple of days ago we did that, before the weekend. And then on Friday or Saturday night, I think, I made up a pilot pin or a dummy pin just to see when we get the new pin, uh, whether it'll, we want it to be able to slide straight in because we don't want to waste time then uh, when it's go time to um, be mucking around trying to get the pin to work. So I got a bit of four inch water pipe and the four inch water pipe is 102 mil and the pin itself is 100 mil, <coughs> which is there. So I turned it, skimmed it down to 99.75 mil just so that it would give us some idea 
uh, a little bit of wriggle just so we could see where the, the spots were going to be that it was going to bear heavily on. Um, so we'll give it a try. But that pin there in its original form weighs exactly 50 kilograms. So it's a very heavy bit of gear and it's hard for an old fella to manoeuvre and manipulate. So I'm choosing the easy, one, easy way out with a hollow one that I can man, uh, manhandle with one hand. So the hope is that this thing will go straight in. And I'm just gonna place the camera here. And we'll see what happens. No guts, no glory. as me anyway it looks like I think that's that's as close as you could expect and I'm fairly confident that when the new pin comes it'll just slide straight in so if that's the case you won't hear any more and if it's not the case I probably won't tell you either well guys it's another morning here at the development block we currently have a bit of action going on here so there's a concophony of augers going everywhere. So that truck there we've got into our grade seed for planting. When it comes time to sowing, we can have some nice clean grain that doesn't have any weeds or anything in it to sow with. So yeah, we get, um, get that done every year. And I think there's about 25 tonne or so that needs doing. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a slow process, but it's good to get done and it needs to happen. And guys, if you want to support the channel, uh, just make sure to keep hitting the like button. Um, you can comment if you've got any questions. I do try to, to answer most of them if there's some genuine questions, but obviously I can't get to every single one. And also just make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, that's the best ways to support the channel. Righto. Well, we've finished in here. Got the UHF up there and the handpiece there. So should be laughing. And just got a little aerial on a bracket there. So I don't want a too big aerial up there, otherwise you catch it on everything and um, yeah, just keep knocking it off. So should be good. So what we've got going on here is we've got some grain coming out of that silo, going up that auger, and then it's going through different sieves and things and cleaning it. And then going through here, coming out here as uh, graded grain or clean grain and then going into that silo now there's a little auger over there going into that truck which is the tailing so that's all the rubbish stuff that's being taken out so whether it's grain that's a bit too small or whatever it may be just rubbish so that's what's happening there you can just see a little bit coming out there still here at the development block for a few videos now you would have been seeing this in the background only being half put together um, and there is a reason for that, uh, basically just time. So yeah, we thought it was going to be real quick to put up. One of us had a spare moment and lifted that side up, but yeah, it needs a little bit extra work. And then obviously we had a lot of stuff going on with um, harvest, then earthworks, then everything else going on there. But hopefully today we can lift this side out. Um, it's just on a big hinge basically. So yeah, we just got to lift that out and then we should be right to put some more windows in and that sort of stuff so these windows are being put in um they've obviously just got all this protecting protective stuff on them um we've got the feet there on the cement blocks so yeah, it's uh it's it is coming together you can sort of see how it all it all works um, but there's a lot of flashing and seals and things like that that need to go on on the roof. So that'll take take a bit of time. And then we've got to make some stairs for here. But if we have a look inside, oh, 
it's uh yeah if you can imagine that area being the same over there there's actually quite a quite a bit of room so this is sort of a big area here and then it goes into that that is actually a separate room there once you go through that door and obviously you've got your toilet and shower and all that um, in behind here so we also have a uh, air conditioning that is going to go in here um, which will yeah also be quite nice but hopefully we'll at least get the other side out and have it more or less weatherproof and then yeah then it can just be we can poke away at it when we get get time Righto, so we got the well, we got most of the windows in on that side of that little building. Um, yeah, it's coming up quite well actually. It's got the bones of um, of, a, of a good little dwelling there, so um, yeah, it just takes a bit of mucking around and and sealing up a few things and um, yeah, just just a bit of mucking around it takes. But I think it's going to be a pretty good thing when it's all put together. So um, most of the stuff now that needs to be done is just a bit of odds and ends, so one person can probably do them and. And yeah, before we know it, hopefully it's all all ready to use and have somewhere cool and nice and all that for yeah, lunch or whatever is happening down here. This work trailer comes with a Josiah. <laughs> so he's just tidying it up after it is out and about on the field for a, well, it really hasn't been back since harvest for very long. So it, um, yeah, needs a good clean up. Might actually do a quick run through of what I don't think I've done a run through of the work trailer, but I'll do a quick one. So I've got this toolbox at the front here. We've got first aid, spare fuel, and battery there. And we've got some jump posts there. So you can just get the jump leads, which are under the first aid kit there. And um, yeah, you can jump off that. So, and over this side, we have needs a good tidy up excuse the mess but we've got the uh, milwaukee gear got a charger there and that all runs off that battery and we've got light switch here and that controls the lights up there too we've got three work lights up there and yeah then we just got cigarette sockets for miscellaneous charging of whatever we need and yes then we've got uh, nuts and bolts got a few bit of electrical gear multimeters we've got um, cans of stuff, tape, soldering iron, um, discs for the angle grinders, and glasses and earmuffs and plugs and all that stuff. I've uh, got spare wire. And then, yeah, just in the drawers, we've got fuses, terminals, that sort of thing. Spare, spare electrical parts. And then, yeah, we've got split pins here and all that sort of fitting stuff. And much the same here, small nuts and bolts and uh, washers and roll pins die grinder bits all that yeah we've got the uh the power pack here so it's a uh, generator a welder and air compressor obviously with the tank here and um you can yeah you can use it as a battery charger too if you're stuck somewhere um but yeah so that's that there and we've got this toolbox here we've got a bit of stuff drying here that was left out but in here we've just got other uh, miscellaneous bits like um, a mat to lie down on um, when it's dirty and that when the ground's messy and we've got um, I think zip ties and a few um, a port of power for yeah when we need to straighten things up and a few things like that pull a kit um, and then yeah then we've got this bit empty here so we can put stuff on there obviously you can see there's plenty of stuff there but we've got a vise here now that's on a slide um, that we can just pull a pin out and pull that whole thing out here so it's it's on a slide there and it's reinforced underneath so it's it's nice and solid see so, and here we've got more just miscellaneous spare parts and things um, a few just random stuff and yes pins and drill bits and all that sort of stuff we've got a old school angle grinder down there if we ever need to do some heavy duty work 
and then drills and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Strew extractor sets and then then just in those drawers we've got um, you know bigger Stilsons, um, shifters, screwdrivers, all the bulky stuff. And this is the main side over here. So we've got punches, glasses again, uh, filter removers, um, glues, uh, Loctite stuff. We've got gloves, torque wrenches, uh, big socket sets. Um, yeah, and then obviously we've got um, these little mini screwdrivers, your Allen keys and Torx bits, screwdrivers, and then um, circuit pliers, tape measures. And then we've got our spanners. Got the ratchet spanners and the pliers and things like that, shifters, and then um, impact deep sockets and yeah, the big big hammer there. So that's um pretty well. I think oh yeah, there's a tap and die set there as well. So we've pretty well covered for most things. Um, we've got a wallaby jack there, and there is a oh yeah, got the big crowbar there, and there is a sledgehammer floating around here somewhere. Um, but yeah, we've got blocks of wood and then we've got all our oils. So the different sort of oils that each machine takes, we've got engine oil, transmission oil, um, and the, yeah, just hydraulic oil, coolant and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, that's a, a quite a brief overview of, of this. We've, I don't know how long it's been since we've had this. It's probably been four years. And the other thing too is why we've got it on a trailer rather than a separate little truck or ute or something um, is if you rock up to something that needs fixing and then you need to go duck off and get some parts instead of taking all the tools with you you can just unhook it and take the the vehicle that's towing it in and get whatever you need and it just means that you can leave this anywhere um, and any other vehicle can pick it up or all of that sort of stuff so just a bit more versatile so yeah, that's the main reason why we have got it on a trailer, but each to their own. There's pros and cons for all this sort of stuff. That will probably be the end of this video. Um, we'll catch you in the next one.